Hello everyone, Mauro here. In this video, we're going to look at the changes and new features that Microsoft is expected to roll out as part of the April 2025 update for Windows 11 version 24H2 and version 23H2. Just remember that even after Microsoft releases this update, it will take some time for the improvements to show up on your computer. Also, the company can always delay or remove one or more features for any reason. Okay, let's dive into the new changes coming to the April 2025 update for Windows 11. But before, please subscribe to the channel and click the like button to help YouTube show this video to more people. It doesn't cost anything and you will be helping the channel and supporting my work. Remember that you can also visit my website for more tutorials and related tech news. Okay, first, let's go to the settings app and let's jump to the about page because on this page, the company is adding new elements at the top of the page, which the company describes as, as top cards. And basically it will show you key components of your computer with their respective information, such as for storage, graphics card, RAM, and some information about the processor. What's interesting in here is that for the first time in the settings app, we get some information about the graphics card. Now, the company also plans to update the homepage for commercial customers by adding new cards, and one of them includes the ability to show some information about the device. And there's also another that shows accessibility preferences. Also in the account section, for Japanese users, the settings app will now show the first name instead of the last name on the username. Now let's just keep on browsing the settings app and let's go to the text and input page. And then we're going to open the on-screen keyboard. And what's new on the April 2025 update is that now for keyboard layouts, you can choose the gamepad option. That will make it easier to navigate and type using the Xbox controller. The new layout maps specific buttons such as X, Y, LV, RV, and LT, and others to common keys such as backspace, space, left, and right. And this change is also available for version 23H2 as well as on version 24H2. Also, the changes that I showed you previously on the About page the accounts page and for the home page, those are also available for version 23H2 as well as for version 24H2. Now, if we go to the taskbar settings, we are now going to find that the system trade icons section has been updated and now it includes a new setting, which is this one right here that allows us to manage the new emoji icon that appears in the system trade. So you can enable this feature in two ways. You can use it while typing. So the button will remain hidden. And as soon as you are in an app where you're going to have to type, then the button is going to appear in the system tray down here. You can choose to always show it as you can see it right here. And you can disable the feature altogether. Now, the new emoji setting is available for version 24H2 as well as for version 23H2. Now, let's go to the test manager. And here, the company has updated the app to show the CPU usage information more consistent. Now, when you see the CPU workload across all applications, the usage is going to match the industry standards. Now, if you want to see the previous value, you can go to the details page. And then we just need to right click right here, select column, and you have to make sure to choose the CPU utility option, then click OK. And in here, you're going to see the legacy value and then the CPU, which is the new standard on the app, is going to show up on the left. It can show up either way because you can actually change the position of each column. But if you want to see the legacy CPU usage, you will have to go to the details page. This change is also available for version 24H2 as well as for version 23H2. Now, this change is available for version 23H2 as well as for version 24H2. Now, let's go to the settings app one more time, but this time let's go to the lock screen settings. And one of the changes that we're going to see on this page is that we are now going to find a new your widgets section that allows you to turn on and off the widgets in the lock screen. Not only that, but you can also add and remove the widgets that you want to see on the lock screen. So if you want to turn the feature off, just turn off the toggle switch, turn it back on. And from here, you can choose the widgets that you want to see on the lock screen. If you want to add a new one, just select it and click the add button. You can click right here to open the menu. Then you can move it up or down depending on the position of the widget. If the widget supports it, you can customize it and you can remove it. You can also drag each of the 
widgets and, and you can put it on the location that you want to see it. And now when you lock the device, you should only see the widgets that you configure on the settings app. You can also click right here and this will open the menu and this shortcut is going to open the lock screen settings on the settings app after you logged in. Even further, if we open group policy, and then if we navigate to computer configuration, and then we go to administrative templates and then Windows components, then we're going to find the widgets section. And right here with this policy, you can disable the feature altogether. For that, you need to choose the enable option to disable the feature. Now, as part of the April 2025 update for Windows 11, Microsoft is updating voice access and basically the update that is included on this release makes it easier for the feature to understand voice commands without having to use fixed syntax. So for instance, you can now say, can you open the Edge app and the system should recognize and execute the command to open Microsoft Edge. In the past, you needed to use fixed syntax such as launch edge or something more specific. And you had to remember those commands. And now you can just use natural language. Also, Microsoft is expanding voice access to simplify Chinese and for traditional Chinese. Also, as part of the this cumulative update, the company is improving the communication for live captions and real-time translation for Copala Plus PCs using AMD and Intel processors. So this allows to translate for more than 44 languages. Microsoft is also expanding in the real life translation for Copala Plus PCs with ARM Snapdragon processors in a bunch of new countries, including all of these. And finally, File Explorer has also been updated. So many of the dialogues, such as for Wizard, Save, and Open, has been updated to take the text scaling settings from the text size feature on the operating system. And that's it. Those are pretty much the biggest changes that we're going to see on Windows 11 version 24H2 and version 23H2 for April 2025. Let me know in the comments what you think about these features. And remember that this is not a feature update. This is just a quality update that also includes new features and changes. Now, these updates also include some other fixes and improvements so make sure to check the link in the video description to get more information. Also remember to like the video, share it, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done that yet. And I just hope this video was informative for you, and I would like to thank you for viewing.